Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Serbia. My name is Robert Choban, president of Color Press Group. Welcome to our first online conference, Serbian-American relations facing COVID-19 challenges. You can follow us also on live stream on YouTube channel Color Media Communications. All your questions for our speakers, you can send in chat on WebEx or on email address on YouTube live stream. Spring 2020 faced the world with global COVID-19 pandemic, which caused more than 2 million registra registered infections and more than 130,000 deaths. In the US, more than uh, 625,000 cases and 27,000 deaths until today. In Serbia, 4,800 cases and 99 deaths. When and how the pandemic will be over? What will be the consequences related to the economy, peace, stability, security, and democracy after the pandemic? It's huge uncertainty throughout the globe. Serbian American Friendship Congress believes that given the situation, the United States of America and Serbia need to immediately join forces in this challenging moment and help each other in overcoming both the current pandemic and its effects uh, in post-COVID-19 world. With that in mind, Serbian American Friendship Congress is organizing the first event of this kind, aiming to raise public awareness with trustworthy information about COVID-19 situation in both countries, as well as to discuss and explore opportunities for mutual help and assistance during uh, and post-war uh, 19 pandemic. Our first speaker today is Vladimir Marinkovic, Deputy Speaker of National Assembly of uh, the Republic of Serbia and uh, founder of Serbian American Friendship Congress. Mr. Marinkovic, this digital floor is yours. Thank you, Robert. And of course, I want to, I would like to thank you for investing a lot of energy to organize this uh, this event today very important event uh, for improving and uh, making those ties between the united states and the republic of serbia of course i'd like to thank to, to our friends uh, first of all from uh, united states from uh, u.s house of representatives uh, congressman and general steve stivers uh, uh, Ambassador Mitchell from uh, National Democratic Institute, Paul Prososki from IRI, uh, uh, Shanley Pinchotti from uh, USID, and of course, to uh, thanks to, to, to all uh, representatives of business community, non-governmental organization, and media who are very interesting to follow uh, this event and uh, to, to open, uh, to, to have opportunity to open discussion about uh, cooperation, about friendship and about solidarity between uh, American and Serbian people, between United States and uh, uh, Serbia and how we can uh, uh, help and support uh, to, to, to each other, to express solidarity to each other in this very, very crisis uh, uh, time and challenging time for both nations and of course for uh, all around the world. I will start with my uh, speech with uh, to paraphrase uh, uh, words of uh, U.S. ambassador in Serbia, uh, dear friend uh, Anthony Godfrey, that uh, we will together will be stronger than uh, COVID-19, and uh, that we will again uh, write a new new chapter of uh, our common friendship. Uh, it was from yesterday, from the opening of uh, uh, Serbian American uh, Leadership uh, Academy, uh, in accordance with our work with uh, young people uh, from from Republic of Serbia. And of course, I am uh, fully, I will be fully committed, and I am strongly believe that uh, uh, we can uh, to, to help to 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 each other. During this this uh, crisis time, it will be not first time for our uh, two nations to to be allies and to express uh, solidarity and to express friendship during this uh, very very challenging time from uh, from both nations. Of course, uh, we are hoping that uh, this uh, pandemic and this crisis will be 
finish soon. And uh, of course, that uh, United States of America will uh, overcome this very crisis situation uh, for them and uh, will open, first of all, uh, business and all segments of uh, social and uh, economy life in the United States because it, it is not. Uh, uh, so it is not uh, only important from United States of America and for American people, but it is the very important for for all world on the global level because uh, all of us, all world uh, needs leadership of United States, uh, especially uh, about uh, enforcing our economies, enforcing our societies uh, to be much more stronger in the economy. Uh, scientifical, innovational, and the, the other the other ways of our social and uh, life or, of uh, of our countries. And of course, we are believed that uh, American people and uh, U.S. administration, uh, President Trump task force, and uh, governors of the uh, great states in the United States will. Uh, find the best solution and overcome this very, very difficult situation. And of course, want to express solidarity uh, personally and of course of uh, all Serbian people, to American people and to, to, to uh, United States of uh, uh, America. Uh, this is the uh, one of the main name of the conference and uh, is how to, to uh, support to, to each other, how to help to each other, how to express solidarity, how to express friendship. Uh, as a Republic of Serbia, uh, our government made uh, very, very good steps about that. And uh, I will mention uh, uh, that uh, more than 200 uh, American citizens brought to United States by the Air Serbia uh, Airlines. And of course, we are very thankful about uh, donation of uh, 6,000 of tests for uh, COVID-19 uh, got from uh, United States of uh, America. We are very satisfied about uh, this kind of cooperation. We are very satisfied about cooperation with uh, uh, the, this uh, US, uh, uh, US administration. Uh, of course, I want to, to emphasize that uh, Serbia in the last few years uh, have more and more friends uh, in all of American institutions. First of all, in U.S. House of Representatives, in uh, U.S. Senate, in uh, Department of State, in uh, think tank organization. Of course, uh, we are rising our cooperation and the uh, level of our cooperation uh, very, very well in the last few years. Of course, I would have to thank to, to uh, President Vucic because uh, he made a really, really friendship and uh, good cooperation and relationship, uh, for example, uh, with Vice President uh, Mike Pence, with the uh, National Security uh, Advisor Robert O'Brien, with uh, uh, Jared Kushner and uh, Mike Pompeo and the other friends and uh, fellows from uh, US politics. Of course, to emphasize, it's very important for us in Parliament to, uh, for us to, to, to rise communication and relationship with the U.S. congressmen, with the U.S. senators, and have more and more friends who are very interesting to help and support Serbia to develop our, uh, first of all, European uh, integration, our economy uh, development, and we are very thankful, thankful in that aim to American companies and American country because uh, we have more and more uh, U.S. investment here in Serbia, and we are very thankful because they are brought uh, uh, new models of management, uh, they are brought innovation, they are brought uh, development to our uh, our country, and of course help us to employ much more people here and to uh, to ensure well-being for citizens for our country. And we are very very. Uh, thankful about that. And of course, uh, uh, I would like to, to, to tell that uh, U.S. administration uh, these days have uh, uh, great respect for, for uh, uh, Serbia and uh, have uh, understanding for uh, Serbia and for our uh, commitment to establishing uh, regional stability uh, of course, and we are very thankful because uh, President Trump appointed to 
uh, ambassador, U.S. ambassador in uh, Germany, Mr. Grenell, as a special envoy for negotiation between Belgrade and Pristina, and of course to Mike Pompeo, uh, who uh, appointed Mr. Uh, Palmer as a special special representative and special envoy for negotiation between uh, Belgrade and Pristina and for the regional stability in uh, Western Balkan. Of course, I would like to, to uh, finish my speech uh, about that, that uh, it is the crisis time, it is the challenging time for us, but uh, it is the good opportunity for both countries, for both nations to uh, spread cooperation, uh, to uh, make uh, stronger stronger ties between us uh, of course we would uh, we will use uh, all of our strong and all of our uh, resources to uh, help in any way to american people and to united states of uh, america and we are very 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 thankful and uh, of course we will need in near future after the covid crisis United, uh, much more United States, not only in Serbia, but in all of region. Politically, economically, scientifically, culturally, we need United States. And of course, we are believed the United States of America will be much more stronger soon after the finishing of, uh, of this crisis. Of course, uh, I would like to thank you very, very much to uh, Congressman uh, Steve Stivers. Uh, for his uh, staff and team, Marianne, Julie, uh, and uh, Marianne, Julie, and Mimi, uh, of course, uh, because we know here in Serbia uh, how is the these days in the United States, how is the how is the busiest days in uh, great state of Ohio for our congressman, our great friend and co-chair of Serbian Caucus in uh, American U.S. House and Senate. General Stivers, we know about his commitment to support and to help uh, small and medium enterprises, family business in his district in uh, Ohio. We know that he is very, very busy, and we are so thankful uh, to him to have opportunity for all of us here on the line, but and for all Serbian publicity and Serbian people and uh, of course citizens of Republic of Serbia to have opportunity to hurt him and to heard messages directly from U.S. Congress and our great, great friend from great, friend, great state of Ohio, Congressman uh, Steve Stivers. Uh, of course, I am very thankful to uh, other friends and, and fellows from, from U.S. because they are accepting this invitation because we have and we want to speak and discuss about that, how to improve our relationship and how to help and support from each other uh, in these very crisis days and what we can do it after the crisis in, uh, in accordance to, to develop our cooperation. And of course, uh, uh, our idea here in Serbia supported by uh, Foreign Minister uh, Dacic, who will be one of the speakers, and of course, President Vucic, to establishing uh, strategically partnership between two countries and two nations in, in near future. Uh, dear friends and, and uh, colleagues, thank you very much indeed, because uh, uh, a, a lot of people are is on the line and follow the conference uh, via YouTube, especially uh, a lot of thanks indeed to our friends from United States of America who take the time in this difficult time for uh, their, their country to be with us and to be with uh, Serbia and citizens of Serbia. We are very grateful about that and uh, uh, of course I think that it is the great message uh, from uh, United States to, to our country and our nations oh, and of uh, course uh, from our country and uh, Serbian, Serbian nation and Serbian citizens, United States of America. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with American people, with United States of America, and of course, God bless United States, God bless Serbia. Thank you very much indeed, Robert, for this opportunity. Thank you, Vladimir. Vladimir, you are in Belgrade now. Uh, do you have an overview about uh, public opinion in Belgrade uh, regarding post-COVID situation in, uh, let's say, business circles? 
there is a, a line from the movie uh, Money Never Sleeps when this old guy Julie says, think 1929, it's gonna be the end of the rolls, but this time it will be faster. Uh, what is the atmosphere and public opinion in business circles and in public audience about, about post-COVID situation? I think that, uh, first of all, I uh, wanted to express uh, such, such kind of uh, satisfaction about how our government uh, uh, dealing uh, with the COVID-19 uh, situation and uh, about uh, Ministry of Finance and Government of Republic of Serbia measures which will be provided to, first of all, private sector and uh, private business in Serbia to keep and to save, first of all, micro, uh, small and uh, medium enterprises, their capacities, and of course, uh, uh, labor force uh, in, uh, in that uh, that kind of companies and of course to keep and to uh, to take care about uh, foreign direct direct investments to encourage them to to keep the workers in their companies and to uh, provide measures to overcome situation and to uh, use uh, opportunity after uh, covid-19 crisis to uh, have new growth and to have uh, new quant uh, uh, jump after the COVID crisis. Uh, we are, I, I think that the uh, business community uh, can be satisfied. I speak with uh, people from business community every day and take care about uh, uh, their needs and uh, think that uh, Serbia, we will uh, overcome situation uh, very well and in accordance with the, with the World Bank and the IMF uh, prediction for 2021, uh, we can we can have uh, very good uh, very good growth and of course to keep uh, it's very important to keep ambience, uh, political economy uh, ambience for domestic and foreign enterprises. Uh, and to attracting them and to invite them to uh, investing uh, in Serbia after the COVID-19 crisis. Because of that, it's very, very important because we have USAID ID, uh, representatives, representative Ms. Uh, uh, Shanley uh, Pinchotti and of course, uh, US ambassador and people from United States who, uh, who can talk about uh, uh, some uh, measures and some plans after the COVID-19 for Serbia and of course all of region because uh, I think that it's it's very very important to keep United States presence here and uh, to show uh, seriousness uh, and uh, good measures to American companies because it is not issue only of uh, amount of that kind of investment. It is the issue of our future, not only about economy and economy development, it is issue of our political development, development of human and minority rights, and of course, uh, our uh, further uh, European integration and transatlantic path of our country. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. So it's not gonna be the end of the world. Uh, do we have a bus, uh, do we have a Congressman Stivers with us already? If not, uh, if not, back to Belgrade uh, with us is today uh, His Excellency Anthony Goffrey, U.S. Ambassador to Serbia. Mr. Goffrey, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, Anthony Goffrey here, and thank you very much for welcoming me to, to this conversation. It's an important conversation, and I, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, Vladimir is a, a great friend uh, to the United States, and I fully support the work of uh, the organization that he chairs. And uh, our goals are, are the same. Uh, we look to find ways to improve U.S.-Serbia relations and to find ways to have you, the United States and Serbia working together. Uh, the Serbian-American Friendship Congress is, is a, a great organization. 
I understand that the foreign minister is here as well, and uh, he has been a, a big supporter of our shared goal as well. But uh, I, I thank Vladimir for calling attention to uh, what we talked about yesterday, uh, and that is that uh, together the United States and Serbia can beat uh, COVID. I'm convinced of it. And uh, when we come out of this, and we will come out of it, it's going to be uh, the next chapter of our cooperation together. And uh, it's something I'm sure we're all going to be very proud of. So I want to talk about, or I've been asked to talk about today, uh, how our relationship is faring in the age of uh, COVID-19. I also want to talk a little bit more broadly uh, about our cooperation, uh, because long before this crisis hit, uh, the United States and Serbia were working uh, together uh, to help Serbia meet its goals. That help has strengthened Serbia's position to address this crisis, and I look forward uh, to resuming our work together. So I'm glad uh, that Foreign Minister Dacic is here. I look forward to hearing from uh, Congressman and General uh, Stivers and my colleagues from USAID, IRI, and NDI, because we share the same goals to ensure that Serbia, America, and our partnership emerge from this crisis stronger than ever. So first, a uh, couple of words about uh, how we're doing, how the embassy is functioning. Our team is still on the job in Belgrade. Uh, the mission's top priority is the safety of our people and of Americans in Serbia. So the vast majority of our staff are teleworking, including me some of the time, and we are adapting. Uh, and uh, we are following the rules of the government of Serbia. But after Serbia closed its airports to international passenger flights, we worked uh, with the Americans and the American citizens and permanent residents who wish to depart and we're very grateful for the government of Serbia's help in this. Uh, it was really something to see. We had uh, everybody involved uh, in uh, addressing this issue. We had family members, uh, my own wife, uh, who is uh, sewing masks to be used in ho hospitals in Serbia. Members of our consular team have literally worked through the night, uh, watching sunset and sunrise from their offices as they help to repatriate our citizens. And in a great story, uh, one of our departing Marine security guards even helped bring home a four-year-old boy who was stranded with his grandparents and needed to get home to his mom. So the bottom line is that our mission is not on hold. And in fact, we're energized and hardworking just as much as we always have been. So anybody who watches the news uh, understands that the United States has been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, we recognize that this is a global con crisis. Pandemics don't respect borders. So the United States Congress, with the help of Congressman Stivers, has allocated $2.7 billion in emergency supplemental funding. And Serbia is getting a portion of that assistance to help uh, prepare laboratory systems, support technical experts, bolster risk communication, and more. And uh, Vladimir already mentioned the 6,000 test kits that uh, we contributed last week uh, from the United States. It's just one part of the US aid to Serbia. More is coming. We're working with the Red Cross uh, to buy packages with supplies and foods for about 4,000 Serbian families. We provide this not just to be generous, but also because we're pragmatic. As I mentioned, pandemics and public health threats don't respect national borders. Helping countries like Serbia improve public health brings us closer to worldwide solutions. So I was asked last week by a, by a journalist if the US was concerned about the aid being provided by China and Russia. Far from being concerned, I'm pleased to see countries working together and I'm also pleased to see large amounts of assistance coming from the European, or European Union Norway, the United Arab Emirates, and others. Uh, the European Union has been extraordinary, extraordinarily generous, and I was uh, very happy to get a briefing on the European Union's assistance to Serbia in this crisis uh, very recently. And I think that uh, people of Serbia should take that as a strong signal 
that uh, Europe is interested in Serbia, Europe is investing in Serbia in this difficult time, and Europe is where Serbia's economy is going to be focused in the future. But uh, Serbia has also helped the United States. And I know Vladimir mentioned this already, but I'd like to mention it myself because it's, it was just so important. The assistance with two repatriation flights was just uh, really amazing. And let me thank Minister Dacic again for this. But uh, let's focus now on making our people safe and uh, helping our economies recover. We'll leave the geopolitical gamesmanship uh, to the tabloids and to the think tanks. So I agree uh, with Vladimir that uh, the position of Serbia going into this crisis was strong, a strong fiscal uh, position, uh, good capitalization of banks, stable currency. Uh, yes, the economic hit is going to be hard, but I think that Serbia will be able to come through from it. But uh, one of the things that we haven't talked enough about, I think, is the role of the private sector. Our biggest investor here, Philip Morris, is contributing over 400,000 medical equipment. Microsoft has provided free access to networking applications for schools and remote learning. United Group provided $3 million to the region, including a million dollars to Serbia. And I personally thanked dozens of companies, Serbian and American, recently in a video posted on our website. I was truly amazed at the level of private sector support. So we're also working with the Serbian government and civil society to facilitate assistance from the Serbian diaspora, which is really important. We've supported uh, the launch of Donatia.rs, the online fundraising platform, and are trying to ease the restrictions uh, preventing PayPal from operating here. These are two important tools that would make diaspora support easier. But let me be clear, our cooperation during this crisis is built on a strong foundation of friendship between our two countries. We've been here for Serbia in the past. We will get through this crisis together and we'll, we will be here for Serbia in the future. So we've invested over a billion dollars in assistance funds over the last two decades, including donations of medical supplies to the hospital in Niš, which to my knowledge is now fully qualified to participate in coronavirus testing. Our strategic priority remains to support Serbia's goal of European integration. President Vucic has affirmed to the EU that this is still Serbia's overriding goal, and I appreciate Foreign Minister Dacic's restatement of this goal. It's going to mean a lot of work, but we are committed to helping where we can. So the agreements are a special presidential envoy for Serbia, Kosovo peace negotiations, Ambassador Rick Brunel, brokered to resume commercial flights and highway links between Belgrade and Pristina are significant, and we're committed to implementing them. I'm particularly happy to see over the last few weeks the cooperation between Belgrade and Pristina to fight the COVID virus together. And it's my view that this confidence building measure is going to be a great way of showing how valuable the practical cooperation can be. But uh, more broadly, our assistance has resulted in tangible benefits to Serbia's economy. More investment has been flowing into Serbia in, the, in recent years, and we have every reason to believe that it will continue flowing after this crisis is passed. U.S. firms have invested around $4 billion into Serbia, and they report it is becoming a better place to do business. One of our most recent, uh, important recent developments was the selection of Bechtel as the strategic partner for construction of the important new Morava Corridor Highway project, which broke ground late last year. We're counting on more investment in Serbia and the wider Balkan region. Last fall, the United States stood up a new agency to facilitate this, the Development Finance Corporation, or DFC. DFC has selected the Balkans as a region of strategic focus and is looking at a range of major projects. I'd also like to call attention to the uh, points that were made earlier this week by the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. 1.3 billion has been set aside for the Western Balkans and a significant portion of that will come to Serbia. Uh, as you know, or maybe you don't, uh, the United States of America is the largest 
shareholder in the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. And we're proud that this assistance is going to be directed mostly at the small and medium enterprises, which are the engine of Serbia's economic growth. But there are a lot of challenges that remain. Uh, privatization, restructuring of state enterprises, public procurement reform, stimulating growth to catch up with EU living standards and completing reforms required for e Serbia's EU accession. I'm confident that we can tackle those challenges together and secure real prosperity for the Serbian people. So for me, the bottom line is this. Serbian-American cooperation remains more important than ever. And I am particularly thankful to the Serbian-American Friendship Congress for supporting that work. We will get through this crisis together. Thank you, Ambassador. As I can see, uh, Congressman Stivers is with us now. Uh, Congressman Stivers, this digital floor is yours now. Welcome. Line to hey, uh, Steve, I think you're still on mute there, but it's great oh. to see you. Oh, there we go. We no, got you. No. Now we can now? hear you. Now okay, it's okay. Sorry. Great. Well, it's good to, uh, thanks, Robert. Thanks, Ambassador. It's great to have everybody uh, on the line. Uh, obviously, uh, we're all uh, learning to do things uh, from home right now in the United States. Uh, many states, including the state of Ohio, have a stay at home order. And uh, I'm trying to observe that and uh, stay at home. But um, I appreciate uh, the chance to chat with all of you over this WebEx. And I think it'll be a great chance for us to uh, chat about uh, what we've done in the United States, uh, talk a little bit about the Ohio response, and then a little bit about uh, U.S.-Serbia relations, since uh, you, we've got an audience to talk about that. Uh, Congress has passed three bills to respond to uh, COVID-19, uh, the first of which was a health care bill. The second uh, gave some aid to workers. The third was a much more comprehensive bill, a $2.2 trillion bill that includes aid to small business, aid to medium-sized businesses, aid to individuals through stimulus checks, uh, advanced unemployment uh, and longer unemployment, uh, and allowing people that are self-employed to file for unemployment as we intentionally shut down major sectors of the United States economy. It also gave money for uh, personal protective equipment for hospitals, uh, money for state and local governments, money for the hospitals that have been forced to stop elective procedures. And it had um, some uh, support for um, uh, moving toward antiviral therapies, as well as uh, moving over the next year, hopefully, uh, toward a vaccine. Uh, in Ohio, Governor DeWine was one of the first to uh, respond uh, with a stay-at-home order. He also uh, has been very aggressive at working to sort of bend the curve. We've been much more successful in Ohio, for example, compared to our neighbor, Michigan, which has a lot more cases uh, and a lot more deaths from COVID-19. So uh, we've been lucky to, uh, uh, to have that. Uh, I'm anxious and happy to answer questions on COVID-19, but I thought I'd also uh, briefly talk about U.S.-Serbian relations. It's great to have Ambassador Godfrey in place. He's doing a great job. And uh, I believe with him and the special envoys, uh, we are actually closer to meaningful peace uh, in the region and uh, relationships uh, between uh, uh, Kosovo and um, Serbia have uh, moved the right direction as a result of, uh, uh, I think, uh, our, the America's new approach and the new government uh, in uh, Kosovo. The Kosovars have uh, dropped the tariffs, which is an important first step toward moving back to the table so that we can negotiate, allow uh, Serbia and Kosovo to negotiate something. Um, I'm co-chair of the U.S.-Serbia caucus, excited to be a co-chair. I think this is an exciting uh, time, obviously a concerning time across the world for the pandemic that we are facing. But um, because of uh, the efforts by the administration and 
uh, folks in the U.S.-Serbia caucus. Uh, I feel like we actually have a real bright opportunity here uh, to continue to move toward peace. I do know that uh, the government in Kosovo had a no-confidence vote, so that's going to make it a little harder in the short term. Um, but hopefully um, we can get folks back to the table sooner rather than later. And um, I, uh, I do appreciate what uh, the Serbian government did to help Americans uh, who were in Serbia trying to repatriate as we uh, dealt with the uh, travel bans and trying to get people home to the United States as we fight COVID-19. So I know that you offered up a bunch of seats to uh, repatriating Americans, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I think that uh, is another show of the incredible uh, relationship that we have uh, between the United States and Serbia. Um, as a member of the Ohio National Guard, I can tell you that uh, our state partnership is stronger than ever uh, with the Serbian military, and we've collaborated on uh, almost 30 exercises in the last year. Obviously, uh, this pandemic is going to make uh, mutual training exercises a little more difficult in the short term, but I, I can tell you our partnership is very, very strong, and uh, I'm excited about that. I also uh, uh, was pleased to see that Serbian volunteers were using 3D printers to uh, make uh, visors that they donated to frontline medical workers. Uh, that's a, another great show of friendship between our countries. Uh, why don't I kind of stop there and, and uh, then we can uh, go to questions or, or whatever works. Again, it's great to be with all of you and great to have uh, Ambassador Gottfried on as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Congressman Stivers, thank you for your time. I think we have questions for you from Mr. Marinkovic. Is that, is that correct? Vladimir? We, we have a question from, from Tiana for Congressman Stravis, and I will use the opportunity to, to say hello to him, to express uh, our thankful. Uh, Serbian people and Serbian citizens are with you and uh, people from great state of Ohio. Dear Congressman in the United States of America, and uh, of course, pray for, uh, for you to, and administration to overcome situation. And we are very thankful to join us and to have uh, always always have a time and invest a lot of energy uh, in uh, developing cooperation with the republic of serbia and your commitment to regional peace and regional stability in this region uh, we are very very thankful indeed uh, to you and your of course your team marianne uh, uh, julie and of course mimi and your all staff that uh, very, very open for all of us from Serbia to develop relationship between uh, United States and, and Serbia. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, General, very much indeed. As I can see, we have Tiana on the line. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, thank you for uh, uh, the relationship we have. Tiana, you are... You are muted. Yes, now it's hello, okay. hello everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Stivers, uh, thank you for being here with us. We really appreciate your big commitment, readiness, and goodwill in developing bilateral relations between Republic of Serbia and United States of America. The Republic of Serbia is grateful for all efforts that you have made in uh, building stronger uh, relations between our states as a co chair of Congressional uh, Serbian. Um, do you hear me now? I yes. got you. Okay. Um, as I said, uh, the Republic of Serbia is very grateful for all efforts that uh, you have made in building stronger Serbian-American relations as a co-chair of Congressional uh, Serbian Caucus. So it's our really big honor to have you here today. Um, I have a quick question. As uh, uh, you mentioned, uh, we know that you are very engaged, especially in the state of Ohio, in helping uh, small businesses. Could you tell us something more about that and about current situation and implemented measures in order to mitigate the impacts and consequences of COVID-19 virus and pandemic, especially in the field of economy? So what is your opinion about that? And one more question, uh, do you have any suggestions how we can straighten relations between our states during uh, this uh, really difficult time? Once again, thank you and many blessings from Belgrade. 
Thank you, and uh, look forward to being in Belgrade uh, again sometime soon. But uh, I can tell you, uh, first, the governor of Ohio did uh, create a stay-home order. In that order, uh, with regard to the economy, he created businesses that he, were, he declared essential, and then everything else was shut down. Essential services are things like medical care, not elective medical care, but emergency medical care, uh, things like uh, car repair, uh, things like grocery stores, uh, hardwares, things that, uh, places that sell things that people need to continue to survive and thrive. Um, and then uh, the federal government, the US federal government, uh, has done some things to try to get aid to our businesses. We started with something for our small business called the Paycheck Protection Program that allows small businesses with fewer than 500 employees to get a loan. And if they use it for four things, if they use it to pay their employees and keep them on payroll, that's why it's called the Payroll Protection Plan. If they use it for benefits for employees, if they use it for rent, and if they use it for utilities, that loan of up to $10 million can become forgivable uh, based on how many of their employees they keep on payroll. So that's been a, a very positive program and we've seen overwhelming demand for that. Recently, uh, the Treasury Department, the US Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve rolled out a new program for bigger businesses called the Main Street Lending Program. And uh, that has been, um, had some pretty good demand. It was just rolled out Monday uh, but we're seeing a lot of interest on that as well. Um, we also are trying to make sure in the businesses that stay open in Ohio, for example, the essential businesses, there are requirements that uh, they limit the number of people in their business at any one time, uh, that they uh, also maintain social distancing of six feet so that uh, it makes it harder for the virus to spread. And the, the governor has recommended, although not required, that people, when they go outside of their house, wear a mask, um, something that in the American culture is not very common, but uh, obviously in uh, many Asian cultures is very, very common. So we're all trying to get used to that now. And uh, it's, uh, it's something that hopefully will uh, slow the spread as well. We've been very successful in Ohio through those measures of slowing the spread and the things we've done to try to mitigate the economic uh, problems seem to be working but obviously we want we need to let things play out a little bit more and see how all that goes thank you so much for for your answers and for your time hey uh steve uh mr anthony godfrey here uh just uh, i know you were only able to come in at the last bit of my uh of my remarks but one of the things that the United States does is work with international organizations and in particular the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, in which the United States of America is the largest shareholder. Uh, they've now uh, announced a, a, a big program that's going to be uh, supporting the Western Balkans, specifically targeted at uh, small and medium enterprises. And Serbia is going to get uh, a, a, the lion's share of that because Serbia is the biggest economy here. I also had the opportunity a uh, week before last uh, to speak with uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Chris Cavoli, who is the uh, commander of U.S. Uh, forces in Europe. And uh, I think there's some expectation that we'll have uh, more military to military activity uh, coming up. Uh, so maybe we'll get you uh, out here to Serbia uh, wearing your other hat, your green one. I don't know if we have, uh, he's here back. I'm back. I'm sorry. I was trying to deal with my barking dog. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited about uh, that uh, economic cooperation that's going to get uh, help to Serbian businesses. And I'm also uh, excited to come back uh, through US Eurocom, uh, through my military uh, role, if and when that happens. That's a great opportunity. And I always enjoy uh, being over in the region and uh, being in Belgrade. Uh, we have our state agency, Tanyuk, with us. Do we have questions uh, from Tanyuk for Congressman Stivers? Can, can you hear me, Tanyuk? Okay. If not, 
Uh, our uh, next speaker is Derek Mitchell from National Democratic Institute. Mr. Mitchell, you're with us. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear yes. you. Digital floor is yours. Wonderful. Thank you very, very much. Uh, good morning from Washington, D.C., and good, I guess, late afternoon there in Belgrade. Um, I am very grateful for the opportunity to join you from, from so far today for this very important event. Um, first, if you bear with me, I'd like to express a few uh, thank yous to important individuals who are joining today. First, um, I know we're going to hear from USAID in a moment. Um, USAID does great work in Serbia. They've underwritten NDI and the SEPS consortium with our partners IRI and IFAS. Um, so I just want to say thank you to Ms. Pinchati, uh, who we'll hear from in a moment, for all the support that uh, AID is giving us, USAID is providing so that we can do work in Serbia. Um, secondly, uh, of course, Deputy Speaker Marinkovic, um, you have been a terrific friend of NDI for some time. So let me just say thank you for all you have done to support our work. And I can add our people out there in Belgrade, as well as all your dedication to U.S.-Serbia relations. It does not go unnoticed nor unappreciated, certainly by me. So we are all grateful. I just want to say thank you. Uh, Foreign Minister Dacic, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, thank you very much as well for the partnership through SAFC and for your support of U.S.-Serbia relations and NBI. Uh, U.S. Ambassador Godfrey, let me just express to you as an American citizen my thanks for your service to our country and to U.S.-Serbia relations. I want to convey my appreciation to your entire team out there for your work on the front lines to make the world a safer, more secure, and more just place, not just for the United States, but for Serbians and others. I want to thank you, sir. Congressman Stiver is likewise. I want to thank you for your service and your dedication to promote U.S.-Serbia relations as co-chair of the Serbia Congressional Caucus. Congressional support, as always, is very essential to convey the strong commitment of not just the U.S. government, the executive branch, but the American people to this critical relationship. And uh, finally, if you would allow me, I want to send my best to Marko Ivkovic uh, and the rest of the NDI team out there in Belgrade um, they are the best that we've got, and I want to publicly thank them for their dedication and their great work. I want to thank them all. As noted, um, I, am, uh, I am president of the National Democratic Institute, which, as you all may know, supports the development of democratic institutions and processes across the globe. Today, NDI has offices in more than 50 countries. We work in more than 70 countries worldwide altogether. Uh, we have worked in Serbia out of an office in Belgrade since 1996. So over those nearly 25 years, we have built strong relationships across the political spectrum. We have partnered with the parliament, with political parties, with civil society organizations, and government bodies to support the consolidation of democracy in Serbia. We have also worked with Serbian partners at the regional level and in wider Europe to advance Serbia's connections to Europe and European integration and to strengthen transatlantic ties. Almost exactly a year ago, last May, to be precise, I paid my first visit to Serbia as NDI president. It was a wonderful experience, if, if too short, I should say. And I came away moved by the dedication, talent, and commitment of our many Serbian partners. One of those partners, I have to say, is the Serbian American Friendship Congress, the SAFC, has been an essential multipartisan, multi-sectoral voice in support of U.S.-Serbian relations and the shared democratic values that underpin them. NDI has been pleased to support the SAFC's effort to link citizens, civic groups, and election officials to advance Serbia's strategy to join the EU, strengthen its transatlantic ties, to fortify its democracy, and develop its economy. That support has included the visit of two NDI board members, who journeyed to Belgrade to participate in SAFC public events to advance those exact goals. The COVID-19 crisis now uh, has intruded into all of our lives. It is obviously a colossal health and economic crisis, but we have to recognize that it also presents a tremendous governance challenge. Governments across the world are being called upon to implement urgent social changes to contain the virus's spread, 
ensure emergency health care is available for thousands who become sick or at risk of becoming so, and develop plans for a variety of contingencies around future remission and recovery, all just in a matter of weeks. And Congressman Stivers just addressed that in our domestic context in Ohio and in states throughout the United States. Governments are having to do um, really um, uh, uh, urgent work now during this time of COVID-19. So governments must balance these complex elements of defeating the epidemic with the prospect of potentially devastating economic crisis now and in the future, all while trying to sustain social, uh, social stability and cohesion. This is a profoundly difficult task for any government, whether in Belgrade, Washington, or, or elsewhere. Uh, but in seeking to achieve the right balance among these various countervailing interests between protecting public health, and protecting the economy, between defending national security, and defending citizen rights, between governing quickly and governing effectively, principles of democratic governance, I would argue, are essential for success. So I count at least three consequential ways that this is true. First, by upholding the rule of law, rights of parliamentary oversight, uh, and general oversight, and individual freedom, governments create social trust. That trust becomes invaluable during a crisis. It allows citizens to accept more easily the extraordinary measures and directives from governments that normally may not be acceptable, but may be uniquely necessary during a crisis. The result of social trust built over time then is that social stability is maintained and implementation of crisis measures becomes easier. Likewise, when independent civil society actors are empowered and treated as potential partners, they, be, they can become not only advocates, but force multipliers for public messaging and service delivery. Indeed, experience across the globe has shown that civil society is often the most effective and efficient messenger and service provider for citizens during a crisis. Conversely, any measures taken by governments to curtail rights of association, speech, and assembly come at the expense of crisis response. During a time of pandemic, that can have devastating, indeed deadly, consequences. It is essential then that governments be transparent when announcing and implementing extraordinary measures during a crisis, for instance, when implementing extraordinary sur citizen surveillance. Ideally, there should be independent oversight of activity like that, and governments should clearly and consistently message that these measures will be in place for only a finite period and not be made permanent or extend any longer than, a, than the crisis itself. Which leads to my second key democratic principle, I think essential for success, which is transparent, responsive, and inclusive leadership. As history has shown time and again, transparent and responsive leadership is critical for nations to persevere in a crisis particularly to maintain national resilience in the face of hardship. So a country may emerge from a crisis as united and strong as ever and move forward. That means providing clear, complete, timely, and evidence-based information on a regular basis that reassures as it informs the public to meet the moment. That also means having an ability to receive back information from citizens, understand how the public is responding to the crisis, and the effectiveness of government measures to address it. Regular feedback also enables a government to keep abreast of shifting public needs and attitudes in order to respond in kind to them effectively. Such engagement must include society's most vulnerable, the elderly, the poor, and the traditionally marginalized communities like Roma, LGBTI populations. Excluding anyone from attention during a crisis, particularly during a pandemic, is literally dangerous, given that viruses do not discriminate. I should note here that NDI has been proud to support many of these communities in Serbia to ensure their equal right and protection and rights. Special attention must also be granted to women who experience shows are especially vulnerable to abuse and other violence during periods of conflict and crisis, including pandemics. We're seeing those many reports every day in the United States and all across the world. Finally, transparent, responsive, and inclusive leadership means consultation between government and opposition parties to project national unity and collective resolve when society needs it the most. 
That includes also in parliament, which perhaps more than any other political institution, as I mentioned in terms of the US Congress, as the closest representative of people, must try to find a way to demonstrate unity and purpose, a unity of purpose in times of crisis. Finally, information integrity. Facts, as I noted earlier, are essential for building social trust. But unfortunately, like in war, the first casualty of a crisis often are facts. The intentional spread of disinformation sadly occurs coincident with crises, preying on fear and uncertainty to sow confusion, division, or worse, hopelessness. Intentional disinformation, often transmitted by foreign powers or algorithmic bots, does not constitute protected speech, and democratic leaders must join together to resolutely oppose and renounce it at every turn while overwhelming it with facts and truth. NDI has done quite a bit of research on disinformation in Serbia uh, and throughout the Balkans, and we're trying to examine how to build resilience to it at the grassroots level, um, and, but it will require a countrywide effort, starting with the government. So looking out to a post-pandemic world, the desire, I think, will be to move on, to get back to normal um, as soon as possible. That, that instinct will be strong. But it is likely that the world will not be the same as we have known it pre-pandemic. Uh, but even amidst crises, there are opportunities uh, to build back better, including on the political side. NDI sees many opportunities to improve democratic governance in Serbia in a post-pandemic world that works for all citizens equally. Our pre-pandemic work to support civic efforts to assess primary health care uh, capabilities in your country is a case in point. A practicing government civil society partnership today can set the stage for continued partnership post-pandemic, including to improve health care infrastructure just, in will, just when it will be needed the most. So as a U.S. non-governmental organization, Supporting, supporting democracy uh, around the world. NDI supports a Serbia that is integrated with Europe and that is open, stable, developed, democratic, and at peace domestically and with its neighbors. We only wish the best for all the people of Serbia and are proud of our long history there and the strong relationships we have built. We hope ties between the United States and Serbia based on a shared commitment to human rights, the rule of law, an open, accountable, responsive, and inclusive, gov inclusive governance will remain the foundation of a strong relationship for years to come. So again, I want to thank uh, Deputy Speaker Marinkovic and the Serbian American Friendship uh, Congress for inviting me to say a few words today, and I wish you all an excellent event, and most importantly, that everyone stays healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, back to Belgrade. Our next speaker is Mrs. Shanley Pinchotti, the director of USAID, Serbia's Office for Democratic and Economic Growth. Mrs. Pinchotti, are you with us? I think so. I see myself. Do you all see me? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Super. Lovely. Floor uh, is thank, yours. Thank you so much. It's really nice to be here and to be a part of uh, a little bit of, of dialogue and normalcy in the way that things were before the crisis. Um, it's really nice to see you, Ambassador Godfrey, as well. Congressman Stivers, it's an honor to meet you. Derek Mitchell, it's nice to virtually meet you as well. And Paul, nice to talk to you again. Uh, Deputy Speaker Marinkovic, thank you again for the invite and for spearheading this event. In the midst of all this uh, chaos in the world, it's nice to come together under, under the banner of friendship and to talk about really positive things. Um, the, the evolution of the Serbian-American relationship is really important for me professionally and personally as well, because I, I believe in, in the strength of our two nations and the way that we work together. Um, as part of the United States government, I'll just reiterate a little bit what Ambassador Godfrey said, that we have been a long-standing supporter of Serbia, and at present we've contributed about $1 billion in assistance over the last two decades. Um, and that, that going forward, now that we're looking uh, post-COVID, that's not standing to change. The United States is still going to be here with a robust presence. We are the top bilateral donor in the country and we will remain so. Um, right now, it's actually a good opportunity to talk about what could come next because USAID is in the midst of determining its next five-year strategy. And that strategy brings together a lot of consultative processes um, where we have 
we never go into a new strategy without talking to government, to civil society, to the private sector, to uh, different groups of people to, to best understand what the priorities are. And I wish I had a, a crystal ball at the moment to say exactly where the, the largest challenges will be in the next few months, but but the United States is ready and we're agile and we're ready to assist. Um, for the next year, we do have a, a robust portfolio of $21 million in funding, and we'll be looking at how we can shape that to best meet Serbia's needs. I don't think our strategy overall, the principles will change though. Um, Serbia's stated goal is to, to move towards the EU, and that's what our assistance will still be be looking at how we can help that given the new realities with whatever economic difficulties there are. Um, but again, it will be towards the EU and it will be supportive of certain principles like uh, Derek Mitchell just mentioned. We at the, at the foundational level of all our programs, we have certain democratic principles that we need to support, which is competition, whether that's market competition or political competition. Um, oversight, whether that's institutional oversight, that's the parliament being a stronger oversight of the, the, the Serbian government, or whether that's civil society and media playing a more effective role. Um, transparency as well on both the side of the government and the private sector, and, and dialogue. Dialogue is what we try to insert into every single program, again, whether it's uh, an economic growth program or a democratic uh, and governance program. We are working with business associations to try and advocate for more important regulations and reforms that help unleash things. And civil society trying to advocate for different civil liberties, but that's all a part of dialogue. And that's how the United States democracy has taken shape. And that's what we believe wholeheartedly in. Um, and that's what that, that Serbia also has stated is in its goals. Um, if we look at what our past programming has always prioritized also in terms of the economic growth realm, we are always supportive of small and medium enterprises as those are the largest drivers of, of growth for the Serbian economy. Before the crisis, they were 99% of all businesses. Um, and so that we know that they're gonna be hurting the most and they're the ones that carry the population along with them. And so we're gonna be looking at ways in which um, we can help support what government programs have been put into place. Um, we're in discussions about what different credit guarantees, loan guarantees could, could be helpful. We have the Development Finance Corporation, now, Corporation excuse me, from the United States um, that can come in and offer a lot of different financial products and help. And uh, we just remain ready to do so. And so I just, um, again, wanna thank all of you. And we understand that these are trying times. Um, the government of Serbia, I don't envy anybody who has to make tough decisions, but they're, they're, they're trying. And we just want to encourage full transparency going forward and a return to civil liberties when, when the, the national emergency is ended. And we remain supportive and ready to help as soon as we can. So thank you. Do we have questions for Mrs. Pinchotti? Yelena? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. I have a question. Uh, first, my name is Ruja Veljovic, and I'm from Diplomacy and Commerce magazine. I have a question for Mrs. Um, Shelley Pinchotti. Uh, my question is, um, what plan does the USAID have for supporting Serbia once the COVID-19 related crisis is over and what are your plans for the next period also what are the projections regarding serbia economic development in the post covid 19 period thank you um I, again i can't say a whole lot of specifics because we are in the midst of our strategy development and a lot of that does involve consultations and i think like everyone we're kind of in the wait and see mode as to what the actual fallout will be we are following World Bank and IMF predictions. Um, the, you know, it does show that for 2020 there will be a, a drop, an anticipated drop in GDP. Um, Serbia actually looks to fare better than some others in the Western Balkan regions, which is good. And I read a really interesting um, analysis from I think one of the members of the Fiscal Council, the Serbian Fiscal Council, um, that Serbian economy actually 
unlike some of the others in the region, since tourism is not one of its driving um, elements of growth and um, agriculture is a bigger one, it actually has served Serbia well in this, in this um, pandemic potentially because the food industry is actually booming um, and tourism has hurt the most and in the service, all actually all services have been hurt, but the one service industry that's driving a lot of Serbia's uh, development is IT and that hasn't stopped. And so I think there's some good elements in there that, that provide some positivity looking forward for, for Serbia's growth. Um, and so, you know, we'll have broad consultations. We need to see what the actual, the fallout will be, uh, and then we'll try to adjust our strategy towards that. But again, we've been supporting the elements of, of democracy and governance. We will continue supporting NDI and IRI in the, the political process arena to ensure that there's robust political debate and competition. Um, that we have, a, uh, we can help strengthen the parliament as an oversight uh, institution. That civil society can have its voice in the policy, the policy making um, process. Um, the judiciary that it still has support to to become more efficient and effective. And then on the EG economic growth side, um, we will continue to look at ways in which we can help the government make reforms that that freeze up um, competition and how we can help businesses advocate for their needs with SMEs and how that relates to COVID, we will, we will step in and do uh, what, that, what, what is necessary and we have the ability to do so. We just need Serbia to also um, have a dialogue with us and we will, we will work together. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, I've been told that we have a question for Ambassador Godfrey from Tanyug Agency. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ivana Terzic. Uh, very nice to meet you all here. I have two questions uh, for Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, you said earlier today that Serbia and U.S. are going into a new chapter of cooperation post-COVID. Can you be more specific, especially when it comes to economy, businesses, investments? And the other question is, uh, how do you see critics that measures imposed by Serbian authorities are a suppression of democracy? Thank you very much again for this opportunity. Thanks very much and very good questions. Uh, I appreciate getting them. So when I say we're going into a new chapter, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, we are looking at how best to support Serbia, how best to support the Western Balkans as we all move out of this crisis together. And a couple of the things that uh, you've heard about already. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, uh, the support of the EBRD. Uh, it is uh, the work that we're going to be work, uh, developing with uh, uh, the Development Finance Corporation. It's going to be continuing the work that our great USAID team has done uh, to develop the institutions in Serbia to make Serbia more agile, uh, to be able to respond uh, to the needs of the world as it comes out of this crisis. Now, uh, I have heard uh, criticism that the measures that uh, the government of Serbia have put in place uh, to stop the development uh, uh, and the spread of this, uh, of this terrible crisis uh, are uh, not really supposed to be doing that, but they are instead uh, supposedly uh, being implemented for political purposes. I don't see that. Uh, I see the government of Serbia imposing uh, very strict but very reasonable measures uh, supported by scientists. Uh, so uh, to have the peak of this crisis pass as quickly as possible. I've directed that everybody on my team follow these rules uh, and we think that they're reasonable. Uh, it is though our full expectation and uh, the international community will be watching this very closely that uh, when the state of emergency passes, the uh, restrictions on uh, gatherings, on, uh, on press conferences in person uh, will be lifted very quickly. Uh, so uh, let's all work together, uh, but separately, uh, to get this crisis behind us as quickly as possible. Thanks. Mr. Derek Michel. I've been told that uh, Nemanja Starovic is with us. Hello, I hope you can Hi. hear me. Yes. 
So uh, I have a question for Jorge's Excellency Ambassador Mitchell. Yes. Ambassador, uh, I have a question about the actions of China during these pandemics. Uh, their actions both at home and uh, in the international arena have garnered a lot of praise worldwide, but also uh, some criticism. So based on your huge experience in dealing with the Beijing, how would you assess their intentions during these pandemics and what can we uh, have as a conclusion here in Serbia and countries like Serbia? Well, thank you for that question. It's, it's typically not NDI's job to comment about China, but as you say, I, I have been uh, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. I have studied and dealt with China for really 30 years now, both in and out of government. And my background is in Asia. So from my observation and experience, um, China's intention, first of all, during this pandemic is to shore up its international reputation um, in pursuit of Xi Jinping's goal of the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Um, they know that's that's their major theme right now. They know, as everyone I think who follows the situation knows, that the coronavirus began in China, uh, and that their blunders, which to be honest are largely a result of their closed political system, um, turned what was a severe local health crisis into a global pandemic. So I think their intention, first of all, is to prevent that fact from embarrassing Xi Jinping mm -hmm. and affecting China's global reputation and its relationships. That goal, incidentally, has led to a pretty awful disinformation campaign uh, led by China's foreign ministry spokesperson that has tried to blame the United States Army for the virus. And again, I don't mean to sound geopolitical, but as I said, facts matter. Um, and this attempt to peddle really odious and obvious lies uh, rather than take responsibility for its own mistakes is extremely dangerous uh, for all of us for anyone who wants to end this crisis and prevent um, the next one. I would add that Beijing's intentions are also, I think, to take advantage of what it sees as a strategic opportunity. Um, I'll be candid here. There is a general perception the United States has not handled the crisis terribly well here at home uh, and that we have not led internationally as we normally do during uh, crises like this. That has left a vacuum. Uh, China, like nature, abhors a vacuum, and, and in my experience, I wrote about this 12 years ago, um, they're, uh, they're opportunists. They have tried, this, tried to seize the opportunity of this opening to offer assistance and tout itself as a responsible nation. A responsible nation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if not a savior to the friendly nations who are in need. Um, and But I think if people have noticed that this always comes with a price, um, this assistance, monetary or political or both. Um, and I should add, it's been found that much of the material uh, is faulty. Um, but China's intention, again, is to gain political advantage in this case, vis-a-vis -vis the United States, and demonstrate the value of its authoritarian system over democracies as well. So, so what is it important for countries like Serbia to consider? Um, look, I, as Ambassador Godfrey said, I, I don't begrudge Serbia or others to be appreciative and welcoming of any country, including China, if they're offering truly valuable assistance during a crisis like this. But I just say buyer beware. Keep in mind that China is not selling, it is buying. Uh, assistance typically comes at a price. Just know what that price is going in and whether you truly want to pay that price um, and make sure it truly works, not just for the, your immediate interest, but for your broad national interest on balance over time. So um, that I'm just being very, very frank about my observation of the way China does business internationally. Uh, it doesn't mean what they're offering is not good or we shouldn't be welcomed. I appreciate uh, what President Vucic has said in that regard, um, but be very cognizant, be very aware of how China does business um, and make sure Serbia's own national interests are protected in the process. That's, that's what I'd say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for a moment, back to Belgrade, Mr. Marinkovic. Very, uh, very, very quickly, uh, just to, to use opportunity to say a uh, huge thank to, to, to Congressman Stivers because he has uh, a lot of uh, obligations today uh, in, uh, in his district. Uh, I will be free to tell you thank you, uh, our brother, 
uh, Serbian people and Republic of Serbia is uh, with you and with the people from great state of Ohio and United States of America. And thank you for your commitment. That it's a great, great message, good and positive message from, from you. And of course, uh, pray to you and your nations to overcome situation and to overcome challenges. It's very, very important for us here in Serbia to have you here with us today. Thank you for taking your time. Take care and uh, send love to your family and the people of Ohio and United States. Thank, thank you, Vladimir. I just want to say thank you to Deputy Speaker Marinkovic, as well as Deputy Minister Dacic and Ambassador Godfrey for inviting me on the call. Uh, I do think the future of U.S.-Serbia relations are strong, both through the COVID-19 pandemic and post the COVID-19 pandemic. And I look forward to continuing to work with all of you on the call to strengthen those relationships. Thank you. God bless you. Stay safe and healthy, and I look forward to uh, seeing you in person or virtually very soon. Thank you so much. Bye now. Thank you, Congressman Stivers. Uh, stay safe. Uh, now, uh, back to United States. Uh, with us is also today uh, Paul Prososki from International Republican Institute. Mr. Paul, you are muted. Can you took me a, yeah. took me a minute to find the unmute button. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Mr. Vice President, Ambassador Godfrey, Ambassador Mitchell, everyone on the call. And by the way, I am calling in from uh, Belgrade, not from Washington ah, great. at this point. Um, so very happy to be with you here today. I'm representing the International Republican Institute, but also uh, the SEPS Consortium, sorry. Uh, that Ambassador, Ambassador Mitchell's NDI is a part of, but also IFIS, the International Foundation for Election Systems. So first I want to uh, tell you a little bit about what we are doing uh, here in the country now as part of uh, Serbian-American friendship, and then make a couple of quick points that actually kind of pick up on uh, what Ambassador Mitchell was talking about, about trust and institutions and democracy. So first of all, uh, our SEPS program here in Serbia has three goals. The first is to build responsive and enduring parties from the ground up. And to this end, IRI is helping parties to organize, communicate, and grow at the municipal level across the country. The second goal is to help parliament engage directly with citizens and turn citizens' diverse interests into policy. In this area, IRI and NDI as well are working on building issue-specific caucuses in the parliament, as well as other things. And the third goal is to ensure that elections are free, fair, and deliver results that citizens trust. And so in addition to the work that MDI is doing here, which Ambassador Mitchell talked about, IFAS wanted me to say uh, that they are working with institutions such as the Republic Electoral Commission, the Anti-Corruption Agency, and citizens watchdog groups and everything to make sure that the process is open and transparent and that citizens can trust in the results. And that's an issue I want to talk about uh, briefly here, the issue of trust. Uh, Ambassador Mitchell also was talking about that. Um, one of the things that IRI is doing right now to assist political parties and members of parliament is we are conducting focus groups. And as you probably uh, can imagine right now, it's pretty hard to do focus groups at a time of social distancing and lockdowns and everything. So we had to figure out a way to do it digitally, uh, remotely. We found out how to do that. The research is ongoing, ongoing, but we have a couple of trends that I can talk about really quickly. The first is that we see from our focus groups that there's a real fear in the country, fear for individual people's lives, fear for their families and friends, but also fear about the impact that the virus is gonna have on jobs and the economy, et cetera. So because of that fear, people are generally supportive of strong measures to enforce social distancing, but also there is widespread distrust. Distrust of the government in some quarters for fear they might politicize the situation or abuse emergency powers, but also distrust of the opposition for fear that they might also um, politicize the situation or maybe that they will cause division when we all need to be united. And also somewhat surprisingly for me, even some distrust of doctors. Now, doctors here are usually heroes and idols, and really they still are, but the fear is that even doctors may succumb a bit 
the political pressure in this situation. And I bring this all up, um, as I think Ambassador Mitchell is doing, uh, because I think we need to stress to our partners that trust is so important right now. People need to trust the information they're getting, uh, and they need to trust that the policies being implemented are really going to protect the public health. Trust you know, is needed at this point to save lives. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'm happy to report that as I, as I pick up the phone and call our partners across the country, I hear political parties are mobilizing to help vulnerable citizens in villages and communities from Vojvodina to the south of Serbia. And I think that this type of face-to-face -face and kind of neighborly personal work is so important to building trust between citizens and political actors. I hope that it's going to be kind of the beginning of reconnecting people to political parties and increasing trust in the system. But the last thing I want to say is that there's, there's a little bit of danger also if we're talking about political parties mobilizing in kind of this ad hoc way. You know, I've been on the ground here for 13 years, and I've watched cycles and cycles of politics happen in the country, of parties or leaders rising and then collapsing, basically, with very little behind to show for it. They haven't built these enduring institutions, and they raise people's hopes and then disappoint them, and that only adds to this lack of trust that we're talking about here. So that's why I think it's so important that as, this, as part of the Serbian-American friendship, we work to institutionalize parties, local governments, parliament itself, election commissions, oversight bodies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these are the institutions that we need to build the trust in that make democracy function. And that's why we are working at the local level, uh, building parties from the ground up, trying to organize parties locally, add to membership locally, outreach locally, the key to democracy is not really like in party headquarters. It's in villages and schools all across the country. And so the reason I'm saying all of this is we're talking about the Serbian-American friendship. Well, I think that the SEPS program funded by USAID um, is a great example of the Serbian-American friendship. And it's working on the very things that we need right now to get through this crisis, trying to build the institutions, both for the current crisis and the long term, so we'll have trust and good government going forward. Thank you, Mr. Prasovsky. I think we have questions uh, for you uh, from Svetlana uh -huh. Grubor. I'm here. Can you... Svetlana? Can you hear me? Yes. We hear. First of all, I'm Svetlana Gruber, and I'm uh, the TV host and editor at Pink, Pink Television Morning Program. I want to congratulate you for this uh, wonderful conference, and it is very important and can help us uh, to better understand the, the situation that we are in. I want to ask uh, the questions. Uh, we just lost sound. You are mute. You are mute now. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Good. Uh, during his first term in office, President Trump made great success in the economy and that should have been his strongest card uh, in the coming campaign for re-election. However, as a result of the pandemic, the USA is heading toward a recession uh, like the rest of the world. Do you foresee some kind of shift in strategies of Trump's campaign due to this? Well, uh, you don't ask easy questions, do you? Um, yes, I think there will have to be a shift. Um, I could probably say just briefly that if you had asked a couple of months ago, President Trump was looking uh, to be really in a good position for, um, for re-election. The economy was strong, there were no major crises, and there was a little bit of, you know, um, conflict. I might say uh, charitably on the other side of the aisle. It was looking good for Mr. Trump and everything has changed now. But on the other hand, I don't know if we can say exactly how it has changed because we don't know how it is gonna play out. We don't know whether the economy will, uh, and, you know, the whole country will open up again in May or whether we will be locked down all summer, exactly how things will go. Um, so it's really hard to say exactly where this will play out. One thing that it seems to me 
there will have to be a pivot off of the issue of the economy, and the question will be where uh, Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump, goes. A possibility would be that he would go back to the uh, things that he ran on successfully last time. America first, national interest, take up the issue of China that others have brought up on this call and see if he can make that work in the current situation. And I don't know if anybody has the answer if that type of thing will work. But certainly this has uh, uh, shaken up the... Um, shaking up the plans of both parties in America, I think. Uh, we are expecting uh, Mr. Rivica Dacic in the next couple of minutes. In the meantime, uh, with us is also uh, Jelena Milic. Jelena, do you have uh, any question for, for some of our speakers? Oh, well, hi to everyone. Uh, I would like to express uh, huge gratitude, uh, first and foremost, to Mr. Marinkovic and his team for putting all the, this uh, together in a very timely uh, period. Uh, the momentum of emphasizing uh, uh, and highlighting the significance of Serbian-US partnership and friendship has started uh, several years ago under this US administration. And uh, I think uh, under leadership of Mr. Marinkovic in Serbia, if I may say so. And the Center for Euro Atlantic Studies has already detected that the public has responded to it very properly uh, as we conduct uh, wide public polling uh, prior to each and every of our uh, Belgrade NATO weeks. So I think uh, following the myriad of the articles published in the U.S. Uh, uh, media outlets, but also comments by prominent uh, U.S. Uh, think tank and EU think tanks members and analysts, that there is a really huge room to spread across just the facts about the scope uh, and state of affairs of Serbia-U.S. Uh, cooperation uh, these days, because I think that there is a huge lack of knowledge of what's going on, that sometimes Serbia is seen uh, 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 through the glasses of 90s, despite a huge amount of money that the US and its partners have actually, and political efforts have invested in Serbia. And these uh, investments are paying off. Serbia is a totally different country from what it used to be, uh, despite all the setbacks and problems that we are uh, facing. Uh, and I would like um, to uh, express the hope that once when this crisis is behind us, uh, and eventually both our countries will prevail and move on, and there will be, uh, I can't say there will be silver lining, but there will be a lot to learn. Um, as all of us know, Serbia has um, a renewed individual partnership action plan with NATO uh, last fall, the second cycles, and huge pillar of it actually is uh, crisis uh, uh, management and emergency planning. Uh, and this is exactly the field in which Serbia enters um, and expands its uh, cooperation with the National Guard uh, of Ohio. And I think that um, there is a really huge room to assess the situation, both in institutions, but is international cooperation, etc. And I really hope that um, Serbia, along with the countries of the region, with the EU and NATO and US, will uh, move and improve uh, institutions and legislation uh, which is related to that, and that, that that also can contribute significantly to Serbia-US relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Prasovsky, do you have any remarks or comments on that? Hey, Paul, welcome back to Serbia. <laughs> I I'm mute, I'm mute. Yeah. Oh. Now it's, uh, now, again, now it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, yes, it's great to see you, Yelena, and, um, and great to be back here. And yeah, I don't uh, have anything much to add to that. Um, the the, uh, the Transatlantic Alliance is as important as ever. Um, and we, uh, I look forward to uh, working with you and with all of your, uh, uh, all of your partners and colleagues in, uh, in advancing it. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Paul. Now, 
Uh, with us is Ivica Dacic, uh, first Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Serbia, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and co-chair of Serbian-American Friendship Congress uh, Advisory Board. Uh, Mr. Dacic, the floor is yours. Hvala lepo, puno pozdrava, izvinjam se zbog kašljenja, zato što je bila sednica vlade i onda u ovom terminu zakazana. Thank you very much and I'm very sorry for being a bit late. We had a meeting, a governmental meeting, unfortunately, so I couldn't be here sooner. I kao što, kao što svi znate, danas je Najveći deo spoljne politike, a može se reći i unutrašnje politike, je posavske borbe protiv COVID-19. And as most of you know, most of our foreign and internal policy is based on the fight against coronavirus, COVID-19. I Srbija se trudi da svojim pristupom i merama koje preduzimamo i solidarnošću sa drugima, damo svoj doprinos u ovoj globalnoj borbi. And Serbia is striving to contribute to the global fight against this pandemic with its approach, the measures we are taking and its solidarity. Mi smo, mere koje smo mi doneli u proteklih mesec i po dana, za cilj su imale usporavanje rasta obolenih od virusa. The measures we have taken over the past month and a half have been aimed at slowing down the growth curve and preventing exponential growth of new infected from this virus. Kako bi naš zdravstveni sistem mogao da na pravi način da pruži pomoć obolevanju. And we did this so that our health system could give proper care to the ones who have been affected by this disease. Da bismo smanjili prostor za širenje virusa, bili smo prenuđeni da uvedemo mere koje za cilj imaju socijalno zaposlenje, ali i ograničavanje kretanja. In order to reduce the spread of the virus, we were forced to introduce measures in the social distancing, but also to restrict movement, limiting the number of people who can gather in public places. Ograničavanje broja lica koja se mogu okupiti na javnim mestima, Limiting the number of people who can gather in public places. I zabrana kretanja građana tokom određenog dela dana na radnim danima, odnosno potpuno zabrana kretanja tokom vikinja. We had to ban citizens from going out during certain parts of the day on working days and to introduce a complete lockdown over the weekend. U cilju rasterećenja bolničkih centara formirane su privremene COVID bolnice, ambulante, i centri za oporavak lica sa blažnim sustavom. In order to relieve the burden on hospital centers, we established new temporary COVID hospitals, outpatient clinics, and center for the recovery of persons who had mild symptoms. Nažalost, u Srbiji je tokom šest, nakon šest nedelja borbe sa epidemijom, po podacima koje su danas saopšteni, ja mislim pre nekoliko, pre pola sata, mislim da je ukupan broj žrtova negde prešao sto. After six weeks of fighting this epidemic, according to the latest data, which has been published about half an hour ago, we have lost over 100 lives. Međutim, pored toga što ugrožava naše živote, u značajnoj meri on menja našu svakodnevicu, testira zdravstveni sistem, naše sposobnosti da reagujemo, utiče i na ekonomsku situaciju, na svakog pojedinca, svakog privrednog društva, pa i države u Srbiji. In addition to endangering our lives, significantly changing our daily lives, testing the health system and our ability to respond to the pandemic has also affected the economic situation of each individual, of business community and of state as a whole. Zbog toga je država usvojila paket ekonomskih mera okvirne vrednosti oko 5,1 milijarda evra. 
Uh, this is why the country has adopted a package of economic measures estimated at around about 5.1 billion euros. Da se zaštite najugroženiji i oni sa najmanjim primanjima, ali i da se spreče turbulencije na podu očuvanja zaposlenosti i poslovanja preduzeća. Uh, and uh, this plan uh, protects the most vulnerable and those uh, with the lowest incomes as well as um, it also protects and uh, further turbulence in the preservation of employment and business, especially uh, small, small and medium uh, enterprises. Ministarstvo spolnih poslova, na čem sam ja čelu, u ovoj situaciji ima interes za pomoć građanima da se bezbedno vrati u Srbije. Uh, and uh, in this situation, the ministry I'm headed uh, is mainly focused on helping our citizens to return safely to Serbia. And we're also assisting our medical institutions and uh, state organs uh, in the procurement and transportation of medical equipment, which is being purchased all over the world. Mi smo organizovali 29 humanitarnih letova, a taj broj se stalno menja. Tada je već više od 8000 ljudi vraćeno to avionima, što u sobstvenoj režiji, ali su bili blokirani na granicama, ne bilo da je već u polivom ili autobusu. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, we have organized uh, 29 humanitarian flights, but um, this uh, figure constantly changes, and we have safely returned about 8,000 of our citizens, both on planes and uh, by land transportation, and some of them have been blocked uh, on uh, um, an entrance to other countries. <inaudible> But uh, at this uh, moment, we don't have any uh, Serbian nationals who are trapped at airports or uh, border crossings. Istim letovima smo mi ponudili mogućnosti stranim državljanima pod posredstvom njihovih diplomatsko-konzularnih predstavništava da se evakuišu iz Srbije, takođe bez naka. And uh, places on the same departure flights from Serbia were offered to foreign nationals through their diplomatic and consular missions uh, as an opportunity to evacuate from Serbia free of charge as well. And uh, in this way, uh, about uh, 230 US citizens were transported to the United States and we helped uh, about uh, 10 Canadians return to their Mi se zahvaljujemo i nedostavljenoj pomoći stranu domaćinstva. Zdravo vidu šeski jedan kompletan dokupiranje. We are very thankful to the US for providing help in the form of donating 6,000 coronavirus test kits. I mi cenimo tu pomoć, posebno imajući u vidu da su i same sljedeće teško pogođene epidemije. And we particularly appreciate this assisting uh, assistance being aware that the U.S. itself has been uh, hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Naravno, ova pandemija je bacila u drugi plan najveći broj spojno političkih pitanja. Of course, uh, this uh, pandemic has put uh, on hold most of, of the foreign political issues. Uh, ali želim posebno da naglasim, kao što sam i juče rekao, da odnosi sa Sjedinjičkim državama ostaje jedan od najvažnijih prioriteta Republike Srbije. Uh, but of course, uh, on this occasion, as I said yesterday, I would like to say that the relations with the U.S. remain one of the uh, priorities uh, of um, the foreign policy of the Republic of Serbia. And uh, we are ready to strengthen our cooperation in all areas. Da naš region postane bezbednostno i ekonomski stabilan i demokratski ekonomski deo Evrope. We want to work towards a common strategic commitment both for Serbia and the US so that our region could become secure, economically stable and democracy-based part of hopefully United Europe.
U tom smislu mi hoćemo da nastavimo naše delovanje, da se potvrdimo kao aktivan, odgovoran i poutan koji je nosila se regionalna stabilnost. And uh, in this sense, uh, Serbia will, will continue striving to establish itself uh, as an active, responsible, and reliable partner uh, for the U.S. and uh, as a carrier of the regional stability at the same time. Um, se da ćemo podići i pozitiv i dinamiku naših, našeg političkog dijaloga, odnosno da budem precizan posljed na najvišim nivou. Uh, we also want to continue and uh, intensify our political dialogue on all levels and uh, let me be specific, we would uh, very much welcome uh, high level changes. I juče je, ja sam juče to rekao, odnosno, da ta bude, oči je rekao da trener šta sam mu ja ispričao, šta sam mu ja ispričao vezano za posjetu, ali Posljednja posjeta američkog, jednog američkog predsjednika je bila u junu 1980. I to je bio Jimmy Carter. I mislimo da je vreme za ponovnu posjetu predsjednika. Uh, and uh, as uh, the ambassador Godfrey mentioned yesterday, something that I told him about uh, high-level visits, uh, I have to say that we would uh, very much uh, welcome uh, the next, uh, that is the a visit of uh, President Trump, considering that the last U.S. president that was here was uh, Jimmy Carter in the 1980s. I was talking about Ambassador Gorsuch when he was in Vanuatu. The Minister of Spolnih Posova, or the Premier of Vanuatu, said that the Minister of Spolnih Posova said that the Premier of Australia, the first time in history, although he Vanuatu na Pacifiku spada u zonu interesa u Australiji, a da nikad nije bio u posjeti Vanuatu i da je došao hitno prošle godine. Uh, when uh, I told this to the ambassador Godfrey, uh, when I was uh, visiting Vanuatu, I spoke with uh, their prime minister and minister of foreign affairs, and I'm not sure which one of them told me, but they told me that uh, prime minister of uh, Australia uh, haven't hasn't been to Vanuatu up to uh, well the previous year. Uh, that is, even though Vanuatu is on the Pacific and it is in the zone of interest of Australia, but they uh, urgently came uh, in the year before. Zato što je neposredno pre toga bio došao u posetu kineski. Only because uh, Chinese uh, president visited them. Uh, recently, so this was the only reason he uh, came to this meeting. Ja sam pitao ambasadora Gotfrija koliko puta treba u Srbiju da dođe Putin i Xi Jinping da bi američki predsjednik došao. And uh, I asked ambasador uh, Gotfrija how many times does Putin have to come to Serbia and Xi Jinping in order for uh, American president to come and visit. Mislim veoma praktično pitao. Um, I think this is a very practical question. Uh, foreign policy is, uh, first of all, based on uh, interest. Uh, we are very thankful to the U.S. Uh, on their contribution, they are giving to the dialogue with Pristina. And, of course, we want to have more economic investment we of course want to attract investment from the US both in Serbia and the region. American companies do danas učestvovale na srpskom tržištu što je blizu 4 milijarde dolara. American companies have participated in our market with investments of around 4 billion dollars. U Srbiji trenutno postoji preko 600 aktivnih privrednih subjekata čiji je većinski vlasnik iz američkih država. We currently have over 600 active business entities in Serbia who are majority owned by U.S. companies. Najveća američka ulaganja su investicije kompanija Philip Morris, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Uber Tire, Ball Packaging i tako dalje. 
the largest U.S. investments in Serbia are those of uh, Philip Morris, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Comfort Tire, Ball Packaging, um, etc. Naravno, tu su i informacijalne tehnologije kompanije Oracle i EMS su EMS su proširile svoje kapacitete u Srbiji. Kompanija NCR je počela da gradi svoj jedini centar van Cjenemočkih država. Microsoft ima svoje regionalne centre u godinu malo. When it comes to information technologies, it should be emphasized that companies Oracle and EMS have expanded their capacities in Serbia. NCR started to build its own so-called center of excellence in Serbia, which is the only one outside the US. Uh, and uh, Microsoft has been developing uh, one of its own regional centers here for years. Uh, our trade with the US uh, should be increased uh, in recent years and uh, last year uh, it has uh, had a total of uh, 854 million dollars. Uh, and the uh, U.S. is uh, still not among the top 10 trading partners of Serbia. Uh, but we can see a certain growth rate. Uh, and there is of partnership between Serbia and Otaja, which would have to be more than the war-war in civil sphere. Uh, of course, we have a uh, partnership between Serbia and Ohio, which is um, now moving from the military to a uh, civil uh, sphere, which is... To su i vratimljenja gradova, saradnja učiteta, turizma, povezivanja učiteća, prirodni komora itd. Uh, we have, of course, examples of uh, town twinning, university cooperation, tourism, connecting uh, small and medium-sized businesses, uh, chambers of commerce, etc. Of course, with the U.S., we have all scientific, cultural, and uh, other links uh, who have been present for many years. Uh, U američkim podacima ima negdje nešto malo manje od 200.000 naših državljena, odnosno naših državljena sa našim poveklom koji su državljeni sa američkim državljenom. And uh, yesterday uh, I said that uh, according to some U.S. data, there is about uh, 200,000 of um, our citizens, that is the citizens of America, who are of uh, Serbian descent. Međutim, svaki Srbin će vam reći da je to malo. To je sigurno mnogo više. But uh, I'm sure that every Serb will tell you that uh, this is uh, a small number, that uh, there is a lot more of us. Chicago, mi smatramo maltene srpskim gradom. We consider that uh, Chicago is practically a Serbian city. Uh, ali u svakom slučaju uh, procenjuje, mi Srbi procenjujemo sami za sebe da ima između pola miliona i milijona. Sada da li je to prva, druga ili četvrta generacija, to je sada pitanje. Uh, but uh, we uh, assess that there is about from uh, half a million to million uh, people of our descent uh, in the U.S. and whether this is the second, third or fourth generation, that is uh, the question. So we need to look for good examples of mutual cooperation and that's why these conferences and these groups that we organize, of course, we organize in the middle of the pandemic Prženi smo i na ovakav način da komuniciramo što nije, što malo i diže nivo za digitalne svesti. But of course we should always look for good examples of our cooperation and this is why these kinds of events and conferences are very important and because of this COVID crisis we have been forced to organize uh, an event that is uh, like this and this is maybe even better because um, it helps us uh, with our digital skills. Ono što mislim da uh, gledao sam pre neko veče CNN i uh, pročito sam kao Kenny. 
da stručnjaci kažu, da istraživači kažu da će Amerikanci morati da se pridržavaju mera socijalnog distanciranja do 2022. Što govori o tome da da će, bez obzira da li će ova epidemija, pandemija jenjavati ili ne, da će posljedice ovoga biti dosta teške i dosta dugo. Regardless of whether this pandemic weakens or not, this simply tells us that the consequences of this disease will be very serious and very long. Zato je važno da se mi osposobimo za život u uslovima virusa. And this is why it is important uh, that we could uh, adapt to live in these uh, pandemic conditions. I, naravno, da da uh, and uh, it is very important for society to continue to function. Uh, to, to i koliko je to moguće i kojom brzinom i kakve će to posljedice ostaviti. And uh, all countries in the world are now thinking about uh, how to uh, reduce uh, these uh, restrictive measures and uh, it is a great question what kind of uh, effects and consequences this will uh, lead for the society. I samo na kraju da kažem, uh, ja sam, moje ministarstvo je moralo da pošalje odavde zaštitnu maske i sredstva u Luvanju. And uh, I just have to say that the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, had to send uh, protective uh, masks and um, other uh, medical uh, equipment from here to Washington. Jer kaže, nemaju gde da kupi. They told me that they couldn't buy it there. Uh, Dokle smo mi to došli? I kako je sada to situacija da mi odavde iz Srbije treba da šaljemo, da šaljemo sredstva zaštitna u temiškim sredstvima. To je dokaz da svi moramo dobro da se pripremamo, da, da imamo spremni, nije, nije Tito bio glup kada je govorio ništa nas ne smije za nas. And, uh... What kind uh, of times are we living in when Serbia has to send protective equi equipment to uh, the US? And uh, this only means that we all have to prepare. And I have to say that uh, Tito uh, was right uh, when he said that we uh, did nothing can surprise us. Hvala gospodine Dačiću, nadam se nećemo morati da čekamo toliko dugo kao vam na tu, na posetu američkog predsednika. I said to uh, Mr. Dačić that uh, I hope we will not wait as much as van na tu for visit of American president. We have a short question because it's, uh, it's four o'clock, so in one o'clock we'll, we'll start, uh, in, four, uh, in one class we'll start the restrictions. Uh, uh, we have one question for Mr. Dačić from Jelena Milović. Yelena. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I had uh, one short question uh, for Mr. Dacic. Uh, what direction will uh, the Serbian-American relationship take, considering the challenges we are uh, facing due to COVID-19 outbreak? Pa kao što sam rekao, sada je spoljna politička, sada se uglavno spoljna politika svuda svodi na, na borbu protiv politika. I veoma je malo spoljna političkih aktivnosti. Uh, well, as I said, uh, our foreign policy everywhere is actually mostly based on the fight against the uh, coronavirus and we are uh, really not uh, discussing any other foreign political issues. Uh, čak i Savjet bezbednosti Ujedinih nacija 
nije mogao da dođe do saopštenja u koaliciji. Uh, even, uh, even UN Security Council couldn't um, reach uh, a mutual uh, statement uh, re regarding uh, COVID-19. Jesu se velike sile posvađale. Uh, because uh, great forces had a fight. Odnosno, uh, čak je Nemačka iznela uh, jednu optužbu na samoj sedmici Saveta bezbednosti, koja se inače održavaju isto ovako kao i što mi danas radimo, uh, znači putem videokonferencija. Uh, Nemačka je optužila velike sile, ta načanica Saveta bezbednosti, da su veoma neodgovorne, neodgovorno pomašaju prema ovoj krizi. Govori o tome da nije ni bilo je bila jedna ili dve sedmice Saveta bezbednosti uopšte kad je pandemija iz proizvaka. And um, I have to mention that uh, Germany made a serious accusation during one of the Security Council uh, meetings. Uh, they now have meetings, as you know, like this, uh, through video conferences. Uh, and um, they said that member states of Security Council are being completely irresponsible because they only had uh, one or two Security Council meetings since the outbreak of COVID-19. Tako da mi, bez obzira što se danas ljudi ne bave spojnom politikom, već formu protiv COVID-a, dobri su ove inicijative koje dolaze i od vašeg kongresa koji podsjeću na to da se međusobno informišemo i da koordiniramo naše aktivnosti koliko je to moguće. And regardless of the fact that foreign policy has been put on hold because of the COVID pandemic, I believe that these initiatives, such as this initiative of your congress, are Uh, very good so that we could exchange uh, information and to keep up with each other's um, events and schedule. Mi smo inače bili zajedno u nekih trenucima čovečanstva. US and Serbia have stood side by side in the most difficult times uh, for humankind. Uh, I u prvom i u drugom svjetskom ratu. Uh, in both World War One and World War Two. A posebno bih istakao epidemiju tifusa u Srbiji. Uh, and I especially have to mention the epidemic of uh, typhus in Serbia during the First World War. Mislim da bi trebalo uložiti maksimum napora u političkim sferom, u političkim sferi da dođemo do jednog nivova strateškog partnerstva i socijalnosti države. And uh, I believe that we should put a maximum uh, effort uh, to our relations in order to reach a strategic partnership between U.S. and Serbia. Uh, a što se tiče ove konkretne situacije, mi smo gotovo sa podmurnom monitorom sa Sazorom Gorfrijem i rešavamo sve moguće sve dnevno, dnevno probleme uh, i trudimo se da jedni drugima olakšamo. Uh, and uh, when it comes to current situation, I have to say that we are uh, on, uh, we are in touch with uh, Ambassador Godfrey on a daily basis, and we try to uh, make things easier for everyone. Serbia is a social nation. We are social people. And uh, as uh, Serbs are very social people, I believe that social distancing uh, is something that is uh, most difficult for us. U Skandinaviji to verovatno ne bi ni primetili. Uh, the people in Scandinavia probably don't even notice it. A što se tiče našeg dela sveta, uh, ove teške mere koje pogađaju naš mentalitet uh, su ipak dale rezultat uh, i u tom smislu uh, Želimo da i Sjedinjemečke države ne brode ovu tešku krizu. 
test for pandemic. Uh, and uh, but all these uh, hard social measures have uh, given uh, results even in our municipality. And uh, I truly hope and wish for the U.S. Uh, to uh, manage to overcome this serious crisis. Thank you, Mr. Dacic, uh, for the end. Uh, please, Mr. Marinkovic, can you have uh, some short remarks? I will be very short. Želim da zahvalim prvom potpredsjedniku vlade, gospodinu Dačiću, na njegovom učešću i uvek dobroj, dobroj volji i posvećenosti da uvek pomogne u ovakvim prilikama. I would like to thank you to first uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, Dačić and Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, for uh, his openness to in uh, every situation to, to help and to support uh, increasing and strengthening bilateral ties between the United States and uh, Serbia. Uh, of course, because of him and uh, President Vucic, we had uh, uh, U.S.-Serbia relationship in the uh, past few years uh, rising uh, very well and uh, have much more respect from U.S. administration uh, these days, of course, and uh, his image in uh, United States administration are very well from uh, uh, former uh, Foreign uh, State Secretary Tillerson, uh, National Security Advisors McMaster, Bolton, today Mike Pompeo and uh, other fellows and friends from, from US and thank you uh, very much indeed to, to, to him for supporting uh, our initiatives and ideas to build uh, strong connections between uh, US and Serbia. I would like very shortly to take opportunity to thanks uh, to all of participants, Ambassador Mitchell, the, uh, Ms. Pinchotti from uh, USID, Paul Prososki from uh, IRI, of course, Congressman Stivers and uh, Ambassador Godfrey and uh, all of friends uh, who are uh, asked the, the, the questions. Uh, we have uh, more than two hours of discussion today and of course it shows us that uh, we have a lot of topics uh, uh, for, for each other to, to, to develop and of course uh, uh, we are encouraging as a Congress of Serbian American uh, friendship to uh, have much more activities in, in near future about building uh, closer ties between uh, two nations in two countries and of course use opportunity to uh, thanks to uh, uh, to to NDI uh, team here in uh, Serbia, IRI team here in Serbia, Marco, Paul, and other friends, uh, USID team, Emily Goodell from US Embassy, uh, Color Communication Media team, uh, Ruja, Jelena, and Robert, because they are all of us involved in organizing and want to 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 have a high level of uh, or uh, organi organization here, and of course to send love and and uh, uh, prayers to friends uh, to in in us who are with us today of course uh, possible uh, possibly to 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 robert benjamin my brother and friend from ndi who are with with us always in every uh, challenging and not challenging situation and of course members of uh, U.S. Uh, Serbia Friendship uh, uh, Congress and the people from media, business community and non-governmental organization and of course my dear uh, advisor Tian and Dedeljkovic. I am very thankful to, to all of us and of course uh, uh, we will uh, inform you about our next steps and uh, thank you for love Serbia, to, uh, to, for love America and uh, for your commitment to build uh, much more connections between our our two countries and as um, Mr. Dacic said, uh, to find uh, uh, some solution to, to, to build strategic partnership between two countries. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank Vladimir. You. Officially, this is the end of our first online conference. I would like to thank all uh, speakers from United States and Serbia and participants from all over the world. Uh, we will let you know about our next conference, uh, Economic per Perspectives of Serbia day after pandemic. So it's not gonna be the end of the world as we heard today. Uh, I wish happy upcoming Easter to all our Serbian Orthodox speakers and participants and good health to all of you. Uh, stay safe and all the best.